The Corsair Carbide Air 240 is essentially a mini version of the Carbide Air 540. The Air 240 is about 40% smaller than its bigger brother and designed for MATX and MITX motherboards while maintaining the dual chamber design. With the purchase of a qualifying Intel processor, SSD, or NUC, you could instantly win an Intel gaming jersey and be entered in the draw for the ultimate system. Click now to learn more. Once you get it out of the box, you'll notice the packing material, which is, well, hard, foam, and bad. In terms of the actual case, we'll start from the front of the aggressively stylized housing, where you'll be greeted by a pair of power and reset buttons that feel fantastic and have great audible and tactile feedback. Along with these two buttons, you'll find a storage usage LED, audio jacks, and dual USB 3.0 ports. Once we come around to the back of the unit, we see a glorious amount of thumb screws, which is the result of the removability of the top, bottom, and both side panels. The left side panel has a very large polycarbonate window, which will allow you to show off all of your main components. I'm very happy they went with a large window here, as with even very minimal cable management, it is quite easy to make your rig look pretty amazing due to the decluttered dual chamber design. Next up is the right side panel, where an externally mounted fan filter is found, which is actually quite well secured by its magnets. And even shaking the case like a crazy man didn't dislodge it, which is nice to see, as I was worried about it falling off the second I laid eyes on it. Both the left and right side panels featured these nice thumb screws that stayed attached to the side panels when you removed them. But Corsair didn't bother to include this feature on the bottom and top panels, which is quite unfortunate, as you will be needing to remove them from time to time. First, we have the bottom panel, which will need to be removed in order to access the filter, which is built into the bottom panel. That filter will be filtering the three potential fans, which can be mounted in the bottom of the case, and your lowest mounted graphics card unit. The bottom panel also doesn't come with any feet installed, but in the accessories bag, you'll find four 3M rubber feet, which you can install yourself. A fairly odd choice from Corsair not to just pre-install them, but I guess it would be really nice if you wanted to have the case in a different orientation. Secondly, we have the top panel, which will also need to be removed due to its built-in fan filter, which will filter your top three potential fans. Other than that, the top panel is also used to house the SSD cage. SSDs are quite easy to install in this cage due to its bendable tray system, but I would have really liked to see a hot swab plate on the other side. Due to the drives being installed somewhat externally, it would have made the installation of them much more elegant. Before we head on inside, we have to check out the hard drive cage, which is accessed from the back of the unit, just above the power supply. I was happy to see that the thumb screw of this little door stayed attached to the door once you removed it, Although, I do think it would be kind of cool if the door was on a hinge instead of needing to be completely removed whenever you want to open it. The hard drives are installed in the same style as the SSDs with the bendable tray solution, and just like the SSDs, I would have liked to see a hot swap plate on the other side, and yet again, it would have made a much more elegant process. Inside the back of the case, we get to see the internal views of those storage bays. The installed SSDs aren't the easiest things to plug cables into. Needing to come up from the bottom doesn't really make it that much better, but it's generally okay. The hard drive cage is easy enough to use for hard drives, but also stands directly in the way of your CPU power cable and your CPU cutout on the back of your motherboard. Corsair's solution for this is a thumb screw, which is included with the hard drive cable, making it removable. And this makes the CPU cutout very easy to access, but doesn't solve the problem for the CPU power run issue. I was able to run the CPU power cable from my Corsair RM850 behind the cage and mash the cage back into its spot while pinning it down with one hand and installing the thumb screw which ultimately held it in place with the other. This worked but only because the cable was flat and I would never actually recommend you do this. What I would have liked to see Corsair do was cut a hole in the hard drive cage that lines up with the CPU power cutout. This would allow you to opt out of installing a third hard drive in exchange for a clean and easy CPU power cable run instead of the current solutions which are messy power cable run and a hard drive bay or clean power cable run and no hard drive bay. Neither of those solutions sound like a very fun compromise to me. There are plenty of cable management loops on the back, but I didn't bother use them. I'm not super worried about having a cable nest back there as it isn't exactly blocking any crucial airflow, and you won't really have to look at it due to the awesome dual chamber design. Then we finally come to the inside of the main chamber where again, due to the dual chamber design, we see a very clean and great looking aesthetic. Especially when viewed through the side panel window, it would be hard to make this build not look fantastic due to how naturally clean the case appears. If you opt to go with an AIO liquid cooling unit, you will be likely installing it in the front due to restricted space above the motherboard, limiting you to just fans without a radiator or just a radiator without fans. That being said, the front of the case is close enough to your CPU socket that pretty much any cooler should work. And while it's possible to install a liquid cooler with tubes on the bottom, making it work would 
kind of sacrifice aesthetic a lot and it wouldn't really fit very well either. This is what led me to notice something. With an MATX motherboard, which is what I expect a lot of people to install in this case due to its size, and an AI liquid cooler in the optimal position having the tubes at the top, you really can't access as many fan spots as I had hoped. You're able to install one fan in the top with the rest being obstructed by your AIO, AIO liquid cooler's tubing, and it's likely that none of your bottom fans can be installed to either the radiator or the headers on the motherboard instructing those. Next up we have the two 80mm fans in the back, which I don't expect many people to be rushing to fill. 80mm fans are notorious for being audibly annoying. Of course there are exceptions to that, but because of this I very rarely see them being implemented. That leaves us with the 120mm case fan in the back of the unit, which is going to essentially mostly cool your cables. So effectively, with a dual rad AIO liquid cooler and an MATX board, you will likely have your radiator fans and one fan in the top of the case. But this thing is called an Air 240, and if you installed an air cooler, you can avoid some of these issues and be able to fill the top of the case with fans. Another thing that deserves its time in the spotlight is the graphics card installation system, which is very easy to use due to its hinge mechanism and the fact that it doesn't require any screws at all. Due to the ability to install an MATX motherboard and the fact that the case is quite long, you will be able to use this installation system to plug in up to two graphics cards at a maximum length of 290 millimeters. And last but not least is the case blackout. The HD audio does have a little bit of color on the end, but all of the other included cables are completely black, and the rest of the case is completely black as well, including the soft rubber grommets. This will allow the case to suit virtually any color scheme you throw at it, and this yet again caters to the great aesthetic of the Air 240. Speaking of great aesthetics, today's video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club, the manliest way to remove hair from your face and other body parts if you're into that kind of thing. For just a few dollars per month, they will send you razors and other bathroom supplies directly to your door, asterisk, as long as you live in Canada, the US, or Australia, so you can shave time and shave money from the comfort of your own home. This is awesome for people like me who often don't have time or just honestly don't want to be bothered with a trip to the store when I'm running low. They have a variety of bathroom supplies available like Dr. Carver's Shave Butter and Post Shave Moisturizer as well as One Wipe Charlie's in a home bathroom size and individual travel packs so you can keep your butt fresh while you're on the road. Specifically trips, not the road. You don't want to wipe your butt while you're on the road. Anyways, you should give them a try. And if you're not interested in paying so much for razors, check out dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus so you can get a discount and let them know that we sent you. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think about dual chamber cases in the comments down below. While you're down there, like, favorite, dislike, subscribe, share, plus one, Facebook like, Twitter tweet. Instagram? I don't know. Also post on the forum, let me know what you guys think, and if you don't like the ads on the forum, become a contributor, that gets rid of all the ads. If you want a shirt, check the description in the description below the video, and thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.